Hello everybody, Jim here. How y'all doing? I am uh, today uh, back in the neighborhood of Tachikawa. As you can see, uh, it is a beautiful spring day today. Uh, last time I was here, it was to go to a nearby hard off, uh, which was great. Uh, had fun, found a lot of games, good times, but unbeknownst to me, there was a Sudagaya here the whole time, like right next to the station apparently. And I've actually never been to this uh, Sudagaya. Sudagaya is kind of like my other favorite chain of stores to go uh, game hunting at. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go to the Sudagaya right here in Tachikawa. Uh, it should be literally like right here, right on the main drag, uh, according to Google Maps. So I'm gonna go and find it. And then we are gonna be inside, hopefully digging through a mountain of retro games as per usual. So that's what's coming up next. Check it out. Round one. Fight, fight, fight. So uh, we found it. It's in uh, this large building here, which looks like it's just kind of a big shopping center and a big parking complex on top. Uh, so that's cool. I've never been here before. So I'll get inside, find out which floor the Sudagaya is on. Uh, Got to find the entrance first. I'm guessing it's around here. Like Google Maps says, I think it says I have to like work my way around to the back. So, okay, cool. Now the fun part of the video, figuring out how to get into the into the friggin' building. Um, but yeah, okay. So, let's get inside, get up to Sudagaya, and then get us some some of that sweet, sweet retro gaming action. Here we go. Getting started in this absolutely epic Sudagaya with these things I thought were pretty cool. You get 10 games for 1500 yen. They had PS2 and PS3 varieties, but uh, this is the real main event. Uh, the glass case. I figured we'd start with the most uh, rare, expensive stuff. Uh, so get ready, strap yourselves in, because we're already looking at stuff like uh, Dracula X and Go Kaiser pretty cool game there's Sonic and Knuckles both the game and just the manual by itself some popful mail some good PC engine stuff like uh, cotton and Spriggan Spriggan mark II, Falsetta more and even the PC engine version of popful mail which is my preference I personally like that game better also some cool Mega Drive games there Dreamcast stuff Sega Gaga back there you can see Gunbird 2 Bangayo Kikayo there's Twinkle Star sprites and uh, Jet Set Radio, all kinds of great stuff. Mega Drive, PC Engine, Gunstar Heroes, Golden Axe 3, Gaiares. It goes on and on and on. It's the game hunt that never ends. Splatterhouse 2, Contra Hardcore, Moonwalker. Okie dokie. Some, uh, some Mike Moonwalker, some more Splatterhouse, some more <laughs> Moonwalker. Uh, some Mega CD games, that's pretty cool. Some AES games back there. 
Uh, not cheap gains, not by a long shot. Hundreds of dollars, but hey, what do you want? It's Neo Geo, but it's not over yet. This ain't over. We got more. This case is like a trifecta case uh, where they also had some of the more expensive PS2 games because uh, right now collecting Japanese PS2 games can be pretty expensive, but they do have uh, some of the more rare expensive games in there. We're looking at stuff like uh, Kuon, Pepsi Man, Variable Geo, Herodias, all kinds of stuff. Even some stuff back there. We've got the sequel to Twinkle Star Sprites. Uh, we've got some Sonic Wings. Uh, all kinds of good stuff. Variable Geo 2 as well. Pretty cool. Uh, more PS2 games, including Raiden 3. We got some of the bullet hell shooters back there. We got stuff like Ketsui and Mushihime Sama. Uh, you know, stuff for the, um, the Xbox 360. That's all really good. And then Saturn. There's always a crowd pleaser. We got Dodon Pachi. We got Metal Black. We got Kingdom Grand Prix. We got Radiant Silver Gun. Asuka 120%. We've got some Symphony of the Night Saturn, which has become a rather expensive game these days. Even though it's uh, an inferior port, aside from the only real thing it has is it has a couple of uh, additional areas that are uh, not, not much to, to write home about. But there you go. There are a bunch of Saturn games in there. And uh, PS1, PS2, Xbox 360, all that's great. And uh, it wouldn't be complete without some Nintendo, would it? Come on. But uh, first, what do we got here? Wonder Swan. So I do not get a lot of uh, requests for Wonder Swan, but there's also DS. All these Rockman World games, all boxed and complete. Uh, that's real nice, but they're also rather expensive. There's Kid Dracula, there's some TMNT, uh, some Contra. Very cool. Even a Kiki Kai Kai. Just a manual for Kiki Kai Kai. Okay. Uh, we've got some Batman, Double Dragon 2. Some other cool Chippendale 2. I never see that. That's that's kind of cool. Uh, we've got some Ninja Gaiden boxed. Or Ninja Ryu Kinden. Excuse me. Even a few GameCube games. And some Super Famicom as well. Including Sonic Blast Man, Macross, Sparkster. Uh, all the all the classics, Ninja Warriors again, more Rockman, just all this stuff. Uh, this one of those cases of broken dreams. You just look inside, you see all this stuff. Earthworm Jim, TMNT, Castlevania. Oh my God! Uh, too many great games to count. What an epic display case. Okay, getting started with uh, the bulk of the Nintendo stuff they had, uh, starting with this little in cap here. Uh, where they had a whole bunch of boxed Super Famicom games, as we can see, some Super Street Fighter 2. They had a number of copies of that, as well as Super Metroid. Uh, but they're charging $63.70 for complete Super Metroid, but they've got a bunch of copies. It's not like it's in short supply. Also, uh, something that is going to be, like, a recurring theme in this video, uh, they have, you know, stuff like this stacked, you know, back to back or uh, back to front, whatever it is. Um, the uh, pricing stickers on the boxes and cartridges and stuff sometimes are not too terribly secure. Uh, Seiken Densetsu 3 for $14.20 in great shape. Uh, that's a good deal. And then for Seiken Densetsu 2, uh, 670 yen. Like five bucks and you get yourself a complete copy of uh, Secret of Mana. Um, but yeah. The, um, the, the price stickers became a super, super annoyance for me. Uh, just because there are so many things I tried to pick up off the shelf and they'd be stuck to another game. Um, Mario Kart 1280. That ain't too bad. So this is going to be kind of a theme uh, with this particular Sudagaya. Some of the games on the shelves were... Uh, clearly overpriced. It was. It wasn't even like a question. And then some of it was like super, super inexpensive. Uh, Mutant Warrior seventy five hundred um, and uh, Tiny Toon Adventures forty nine hundred. You know what? We got a um, 
uh, a Turtles collection. It'd be nice if we got a Tiny Toon collection, too. Wouldn't that be nice? Something like that. Uh, 5,000 for complete uh, Link to the Past, but the box is a bit ratty. Um, so, and that's another thing I'll say. At least they're, uh, you know, they're considerate of things like that, like condition of boxes and manuals, and they're very upfront. Uh, Soul Blader, aka Soul Blazer, very cool, 4890. Uh, so there you go. Suda guy, usually you can really uh, trust them. If there's something uh, wrong with a game or there's any damage, you'll know right away. 880 for Tetris Battle Gaiden. Even if that was a loose cart, that would be a pretty decent price on that. Uh, Twinby, the Rainbow Bell Adventure, 4920. Uh, that's kind of, you know, right where it should be. But, um, yeah, so in general, uh, prices in here were kind of all over the road. I would say most of what I found in here was pretty decent price, especially when it comes to, like, the loose carts and stuff. Uh, but some of it insane. Yeah, great, yeah, just put those stickers anywhere. 640 for Panel Depon. That's not bad. And we got us some Sailor Moon games, the prettiest damn games on the Super Famicom. Uh, Sailor Moon R, one of the beat em ups. I believe that one has multiplayer. And this one, the original Sailor Moon, uh, is a single player only game. But either way, they're both um, pretty fun beat em ups, but very basic and very easy. And Sailor Moon S for 5200, the fighting game. Uh, which, again, pretty basic fighter. Uh, none of these Sailor Moon games are going to blow you away, but they're all decent enough. And then one of the puzzle games, I feel like there are like three or four different Sailor Moon puzzle games on the Super Famicom. Um, the only one I can really remember is called Fua Fua Panic, and that one was pretty good. Final Fight 2, uh, 2520 for a complete copy, so that's okay. Also, you'll notice uh, inside the, um, the plastic seal... Uh, for uh, a lot of these games, they'll have that little blue card on it. That's uh, for when you take that up to the counter, they take that to the back. It's got a little num registry number on it, and then they go and they find your game, your cartridge or your disc, whatever the case may be. But we got some Yoshi's Island, we got some Yu Yu Hakusho, we've got some uh, Ryuko no Ken 2, aka Art of Fighting 2, that's pretty cool. And right next to it, the original for 3630 for a complete copy of that. That's uh, maybe a little more than what I normally see it for. We've got some of the Rockman games though. We got X for 7880. Give me a break. That's a very common game. So is X2. X2 they're selling for 6180. Um, the Rockman X games, that's the thing. Rockman games, they're always popular, but they're very common as well. Uh, 1500 for uh, this one of the Ronmo one half. There's like three Ronmo one half fighting games, and then there's an RPG as well. Um, they're usually pretty inexpensive. 6780 for Goemon 2, that kind of hurts, and 3880 for the original Goemon. So yeah, as you can see, not all of these prices are especially generous. Um, but man, do they have a big selection of games. Goemon 3, 5780, some Fatal Fury. All, all, just all kinds of good stuff. It's just, you gotta be really choosy, especially if you're shopping on a budget. If you're shopping for other people, uh, as I usually am, you know, I wanna stretch, stretch people's dollar a little bit. Uh, Mickey's Tokyo Disney, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, all these loose carts. Um, for the most part, the loose cart prices were, eh, not too bad. 1860 for loose Sailor Moon, though. Mmm, I don't know. Uh, that's, well, 1000 for that one. I guess it's a little more uh, damaged. I mean, again, I'll say the condition of most of the stuff I was coming across in here was really good. Uh, and again, anything that wasn't was labeled as such. 1170 for loose uh, Rockman X and Rock and Roll Racing for 1270. That's cool. I never see Rock and Roll Racing uh, when I'm out doing my hunts. So that's pretty cool. And then here they just had boxes. You could buy boxes for your games. And that's how you know they're really catering to collectors. Because who who other than an, an actual retro game collector would, would give a crap to buy a box or a manual or what have you. This is strictly collectors only type stuff. Uh, the average person that's just like, oh cool, Super Famicom games. I remember those. They're not going to buy an empty, you know, uh, Bonk's adventure 
uh, box. Wolfenstein 3D on the Super Famicom. Again, a one I don't come across very often, so it's just kind of cool to see it. Uh, we've got some Go Go Akman. We got Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which uh, by Capcom, but I don't think I've ever played that one. 3,000 for Loose Super Castlevania 4. We've got some more Goemon games. That's all well and good. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of games. Um, so I obviously don't not showing everything here because that would stretch this video out way further than I wanted it to be. But uh, trust me when I said I spent quite a lot of time digging through those games. Uh, we are also going to jump over to the Famicom aisle, starting off with Akira for the Famicom, which is pretty cool. Um, it's it's basically just like a point-and-click sort of like visual novel type type game But it's cool that there's even just an 8-bit Akira game uh, East 2 uh, In case you didn't know the East the first couple actually I think the first three East games they were all released on the Famicom uh, I think all of them by Falcom and uh, they're all pretty cool uh, Some elevator action for you. I love these old classics a little bit of urban champion for you not a great game in my uh, estimation there. And golf, classic golf, uh, which I also don't really like. I, I eventually grew to like golf games, particularly like Hot Shots and Mario Golf, but not a fan of those old 8-bit and 16-bit ones. Uh, Kita Kita Star Knight, I think, pretty cool game. I think put out by Columbus Circle, 3310, boxed and complete, Gradius, and 3000 as well. Uh, so that's cool. I'm a big Gradius fan. Always cool when I can come across more copies. And uh, the classic that is Galaga, although it's overpriced. All right. Uh, some Gege Ge no Kitaro, 3180. And uh, I think, yeah, I'm starting to... More sticky stickers. Uh, some Goonies. There you go. I, I think somebody told me that Goonies was released. Like there's Goonies, Goonies 2, and I was a little confused on if which, you know, I thought Goonies 2 was released in the uh, North America, not the others. This is kind of cool. It's uh, it's not Getsu Fumadin, or is it Getsu Fumadin? I think so. Uh, but this cool, like, special edition, I guess, released way back in the day with, like, little figures in it and all kinds of other stuff. A heavy box, so there was quite a lot of cool bonuses in there, so that's nice. I don't think I've ever come across that before. Uh, 4330 for Mario 3, and that's just one of those things where it's like, why? <laughs> it's like one of the, the most popular, best-selling Famicom games. It's not like there's a shortage of copies of it. There's millions of copies out there, man. Do you really need that much for it? Uh, 4680 for Complete Star Soldier, um, which I, I rarely come across boxed Star Soldier for whatever reason. It's, it just feels like 9 out of 10 times it's always loose and a little ratty. Maybe, uh, you know, people didn't feel like they needed to take care of their Star Soldier copies. I don't know. Uh, Hogan's Alley. Not much use to me because I don't have a light gun, but maybe somebody would want it. Uh, again, I am shopping for other people uh, when I make these uh, videos. Some magical Taruru Tokun. What does that say? Fantastic World. Uh, there are some cool Taruru Tokun games, I don't mind telling you. And then some boxed Rockman games, but 6300 for Rockman 3. That's an ouchie, and then 5550 for Rockman 5, uh, which is uh, my favorite of the 8-bit Rockman games, which is kind of an unpopular choice, I think. You know, a lot of people, they either go for 2 or 3, uh, but I'm a Rockman 5 guy, even though I like all of them, and uh, the, the lone Famicom disc game. Uh, Gunhead, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, because Gunhead is blazing lasers on the PC Engine. And I know there's also a movie called Gunhead, so it's like maybe loosely based on the movie. But what is it? I don't know. Speaking of, Macross for 520 yen. Uh, we got some other stuff here. Twin B3 for 12.90. That's okay. Some TMNT, 1880. Other various things here. Tecmo Bowl, classic. I think actually one of the first any, uh, NES games I ever played was Tecmo Bowl. Donkey Kong 3. And the original Donkey Kong, an absolute classic. Love that game. It's like 500 yen, 600 for Top Gun. So some of this isn't so bad. They're like $5 games, $4 games. Uh, but 1930 for that, 450 for a horrible looking Dr. Mario. Come on, Sudagaya, get it together. Dragon Spirits, cool game. Some Dragon Ball as well. And uh, this called my, I think, uh, Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout, I think, for 1300 I've never played it. I just saw those, uh, you know, the uh, AVGN episodes, and I was like, oh, okay, that Bugs Bunny game. I know that. 
Uh, Ninja Ryu Kinden 2 for eleven ninety. That's not so bad. Like ten bucks for that game. Some Jaja Maru Kun. All that stuff. More Galaga. Excellent. Loose carts of Gradius. Uh, Six hundred and twenty yen. So it's like five dollars, and you've got yourself a copy of Gradius. I think that's not too bad. I would say like five dollars for a loose cart is uh, you know pretty acceptable. Eleven sixty for Super Mario USA. Uh, which is a classic, totally overshadowing the uh, Doki Doki Panic or whatever. Star Wars, and it's actually a decent looking clean copy for once. That's a nice change of pace. And some Double Dragon 3, which honestly, I've still never played Double Dragon 3 now that I think of it. I don't think I have. I could be mistaken. I am starting to get uh, up there in age. I forget stuff. Uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, again, they have a bunch of copies. I don't know why it's $24.50 if you have so many copies. That should probably be closer to like 10 bucks, but hey. That's just me. I don't own the store. I don't get to price these things. Uh, we're going to take a quick look, though, at some of this uh, other Nintendo stuff. Some GameCube, some Wii, all that uh, nice stuff there. Uh, GameCube games, they had some cool stuff. we got uh, Star Fox. We've got Sonic Heroes 1640, which uh, I do like that theme song, at least. Not the best soundtrack in the series, but at least the theme song is good. Uh, some Mario Sunshine, Smash Brothers. Uh, this is pretty cool. A nice little compilation of some uh, uh, really good Nintendo puzzle games. Dr. Mario, Panel Depon, and Yoshi's Cookie, which is uh, pretty fantastic. If I don't mind telling you. If I couldn't already play all those games digitally on the Switch, that's the kind of thing I'd maybe like to have. We got some N64 games here boxed, including uh, Akumajo Dracula, Castlevania, which there's been some a bit of a resurgence for people, you know, that like that game. I've I've played it, I just never really cared for it. Maybe if it wasn't called Castlevania, if I wasn't expecting a Castlevania game. Uh, 400 yen for complete Wave Race 64, that ain't bad. And we've got some Star Fox, we've got F-Zero, we've got these uh, Zeldas with their beautiful epic uh, cover art. Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire, uh, tore up box, but uh, 830, and that's just, you know, that's an epic game. I remember absolutely loving me some Shadows of the Empire. 1420 for Mario 64. I feel like Mario 64 should be priced at least as low as Wave Race. I mean, it's 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 got to be more common. It should be like five bucks. Uh, and we yeah we got some Smash Brothers. We got some other Zelda's. We got all kinds of great stuff here. Um, you know the N64, not my favorite console. It's got a few just great all-time greats on it. GoldenEye, you know, the Zelda games, Mario, uh, and then some loose cards here. I guess there was a run on N64 games and they were running out, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's a whole lot of Nintendo goodness in the Sudagaya. <laughs> Okay, getting started in this uh, this aisle, big aisle, huge, big, 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 big aisle. Uh, starting with some PS1 stuff, 6,030 yen for Akumajo, Dracula X, something, something, Nantoka, Nantoka. Uh, it's Symphony of the Night uh, for 6,030 yen. Uh, that's one that uh, always goes up, but then there's like this Greatest Hits version for 3290. But is that really what you want? You want Greatest Hits? I don't know. Back in the day, I mean, of course, when you were a kid on a budget, and a budget meaning I didn't have any money, I just was, like, desperate to get uh, a, a game any way I could get it. Uh, greatest Hits, yeah, that was a, a blessing. Here we have something by Atlas, what does that say? Papaya? What the hell? <laughs> Valkyrie Profile. See, we're getting into the, the, the PS1 here, where there's, there, there's plenty of stuff still on the PS1. Uh, that I don't know what the hell it is. I mean, there's like 2,000 games released on that console. Uh, 1170 for the original Vampire the Night Warriors. Great game. And then we've got Vampire Savior EX, uh, which we knew as Darkstalkers 3 back in the day. Now, though, with the uh, Capcom Fighting Collection, uh, you can just get all of that right there on your whatever Switch PS4. Sister Princess 2. That sounds um, a little bit suspect. 
I can't lie. X-Men vs. Street Fighter EX Edition. They're like, yeah, it's the EX Edition. Meaning you can't, there's no tag feature and there's longer load times and it's not as good as the Saturn version, but it's got the EX in there. Uh, ooh. Super Black Bass 2X. <laughs> uh, and then some Super Puzzle Fighter 2X. Was that? That is an X, yeah. This time, the the Black Bass is not... We're not fucking around here. <laughs> and another uh, another bass fishing game. We're we're going blue today. Uh, we're gonna do some swearing today. Um, whatever the hell that is. Uh, and some hey, all right, some uh, Clonoa Door to Phantomile. Uh, I did just recently pick up the Clonoa um, HD collection though on the Switch. So uh, again, some of these games are being made obsolete. We got Capcom. Generations 5 with just, you know, more versions of Street Fighter 2. Honestly, how many times could Capcom re-release uh, Street Fighter 2? Give me a break. Uh, Gunner's Heaven. This is a pretty cool game, actually. 6290. Um, most often compared to Gunstar Heroes. Uh, it's sort of like that. Sort of like a Gunstar Heroes. Um, but on your PS1. And it's a lot of fun. And some Capcom versus SNK. Also there on your uh, your PS1. Of course, any fighting game will be better on the Saturn or the Dreamcast. Some Q Tenkai, uh, which is a pinball game, uh, which I like a lot. And then this, Ghost in the Shell. Uh, always forget the exact title. Something or other, Kidotai. Um, but I do love that original Ghost in the Shell game. I think developed by some studio at Sony. The same people that did, like, Jumping Flash or something. Uh, King of Fighters, I think that's Kyo, that's the RPG one, and then there's like 96 and 97, that's all good, and then, ooh, Psychic Force 2 for 1170, I uh, love this game, love the entire series, and for like 10 bucks, um, that ain't bad, Psychic Force 2, great game, I'll definitely, you know, spend 10 bucks on that, as a matter of fact, I did, that's one of the games I picked up today, and then you, what are you doing here? You're a Sega Saturn game. You, what are you doing? You see, they grow legs and they 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 go to other shelves. It's kind of like, did you see that movie? What was that movie? Uh, Sausage Party. I feel like that's what the games in here are probably doing at nights. They're hooking up with the PlayStation games. Uh, we got some Angel Eyes, which is a pretty cool fighter, and uh, a little collection here with Tiger Heli and Twin Cobra, which again, you can get those on your modern consoles now. And this Doctor Slump game, 5500. Uh, pretty cool. In case you didn't know, uh, there is a 3D Dr. Slump kind of adventure game, and it's pretty cool. Actually, uh, from what I can remember playing it, it reminded me a little bit of Mega Man Legends, so that was cool. And then also, uh, speaking of, 6480 for Gummu. Uh, so if you like Battle Angel Alita, there is a PS1 kind of adventure, almost like action RPG uh, Battle Angel Alita game, and it's pretty damn cool. And uh, here we have Rival Schools 2. Uh, the title is very long, but uh, Justice Gakuen, it's great. It's got some additional characters and mini games and stuff. And then 870 for the original Rival Schools. That's pretty good. Uh, the Samurai Spirits RPG, and then 1340 for Real Battle on Film, aka Street Fighter the Movie the Game. Marvel Super Heroes, also awesome. Uh, more of this great Capcom stuff. I mean, Star Gladiator, Street Fighter Collection, 32-bit uh, Capcom, man. You just can't go wrong with it. I'm uh, such a huge fan of that era of gaming. Trap Gunner, uh, which I have vague recollections of, but it's 1380. So there you go. and Get yourself some Trap Gunner. Have a good old time with that. Uh, let's keep perusing, shall we? What is it? Evil Zone? Is that what that is? A 3D Fighter. Is it Evil Zone? Am I not mistaken? Uh, that was pretty cool. I think I, I either rented it back in the day or my brother had it, oddly enough. Police Knots on the PS1. Some good stuff. Some Fujiko looking uh, sexy on there. Uh, Fist. Which uh, I think I've played this game before. And it wasn't great. But it's 2780. So you're going to pay 2780 for a game that sucks. Uh, Hermy Hopperhead, cool game I've talked about in the past. Japan exclusive, 2D platformer, uh, fun stuff. All those Biohazard games. 
I mean, there's just a million bajillion of them. Uh, Mr. Driller G. Because as we all know, Mr. Str Mr. Driller is a straight G. Nobody drills like that unless they're a G. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom EX. More Marvel superheroes. This is more, 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 more PS1. Because, you know, could you ever go wrong with more PS1? When everyone, anyone says to me, hey, Jim, how much PS1 should we get? I just say more. Uh, we got Rockman, Battle and Chase, we got X3, we got Rockman 8, we got a whole bunch of the Rockmans. Uh, we're going to browse the other side as well. Here, uh, Fatal Fury 2, and it looks like it's like a, oh, for the X68000, okay. That's pretty cool. I myself do not have an X68000. I think the only time I've ever actually played one was, uh, they had a demo, one demo at um, uh, Beep in Akihabara, so I got to enjoy it. Uh, yeah, they just put that anywhere, Jim. Uh, Conan Exile. No idea. Never played an Xbox One or a Series S or X or anything. But I did like the Conan game on the Xbox 360 back in the day. And I'd like to try that new Thief game as well. Because I did like, uh, Thief Deadly Shadows back, way back when. We got Alan, uh, Alan Wake. We got Otomedius. We got Arcana Hearts. That's all cool. And... Some Dodon, Pachi, Daiojo, EX, Black's Label, etc., etc., uh, for 7270. Great game, although we are about to be getting uh, Dodon, Pachi, uh, Daiojo on modern consoles, courtesy of M2. So I'm waiting for that with bated breath. We got some other Xbox 360 stuff here. Uh, good stuff. I personally loved my 360 back in the day and my OG Xbox. There were some games on the Xbox. Uh, at the time that uh, they just had their own feel, you know what I mean? You know, but we got plenty of Sega Saturn stuff here, so we're going to look at Saturn and Dreamcast. Some of my favorite consoles to play and collect games for. Vampire Hunter, super, super inexpensive game. Uh, there's another PS1 game over there. What are you doing? 4570 X-Men Children of the Atom. And that's uh, a bit pricey for that, I don't mind telling you. 3180 for NBA Jam Tournament Edition. He's on fire! He's re No, really, he's on fire! Like if you were just in the middle of a basketball game and the ball suddenly caught on fire. Gusu no Yo-Yo S! Fun series of uh, puzzle games. And Gradius, the deluxe pack for 3130 Again, kind of expensive. That's definitely more than uh, what I paid for it the last time I was at a hard-off. Uh, Fantastic Pinball, Q Tenkai, the Saturn version. Again, really great video pinball game, but 7,080 yen is asking a lot. That's like 60 bucks, and I'm, uh, I don't know I feel comfortable with that. 3620, though, for Gunbird. That's actually not too bad for Gunbird. That's like right, right in the, uh, the meaty part of the curve. That's too much for Fatal Fury 3, though. Um, more of these Capcom generations here. Uh, generations 4 and some of the other ones, and... Guardian Heroes for 9,000 yen. That's just ridiculous. Like, I don't, I don't, 7240, still ridiculous. That should be like a 3,000 yen, 3,500 yen game. At the Sudagaya in Shinjuku, actually, uh, now that I think about it, <laughs> it's, it's more reasonably priced there than it is here. So again, like, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video. Some of the prices here, okay. Some of them, absolutely batshit crazy. And we've got some more games stuck together. Oh, I just love these stickers. 1200 for KOF 95 with the box and everything. That's pretty good. Uh, 2350 for some Samurai Spirits. So there you go. So some of this stuff is just like, when I looked at the prices, I was like, excuse me, do you have a gun I can put in my mouth? Because this is insanity. I don't want to live in this world <laughs> where Guardian Heroes cost 9,000 yen. Saturn Bomberman, play it, get your 10 player action going. Gotta love it. And some more Street Fighter. Real Battle on film for 1410. Uh, which I don't care what anyone says. I actually really like that game. Tenchio Kurao to 7800, aka Warriors of Fate. Again, that is included in the Capcom Beat 'em Up bundle. So you can just get that anytime. 3360 for Darius Gaiden. Uh, with the spine card and everything. So that's not too bad. And that is. Uh, great game. Probably my favorite of the Darius games. Uh, what else we got? Waku Waku 7? Pretty decent little fighter. Not the best, but pretty good. 
Uh, and we've got some real bouts, which is always nice. Which one is this? Is this the original real bout or is it special? Because it's very, very special. Layer section, kind of a greatest hits style version for 3580. Uh, of course, layer section now also available on modern consoles. 2580 for Magic Knight Ray Earth. Great game on the Sega Saturn. Uh, much cheaper than its North American counterpart. And 3730 for an original layer section. Again, though, you can get Ray Storm, Ray Force, and Ray Crisis all as part of the Ray's arcade chronology. Uh, Metal Black, pretty cool game. It, it's good. Not my favorite Saturn shooter by a long shot, but pretty good. But at 9,600 yen, that's not getting any cheaper. Feels like some of these they could have just put in that display case over there. Uh, but we got some more good stuff. Some Marvel superheroes. Magical School or Magical Academy Lunar. Uh, another game in the Lunar series, but um, much easier. It's, it's a much more like kid friendly, uh, easily approachable game. Sui Koenbu. Uh, another 2D fighter by Data East, which is decent, I'll say. 6180. Or was that 6810 for some Marvel? So there we go. We got all the good stuff. All the good ones. And you know. And now we're coming up on some Dreamcast. You know we love our Dreamcast. We've got some Vampire Chronicle. And that's just fantastic. That's right. I'm busting out the German. That's how good these games are now. I'm, it, it, they're so good. It, it forced me to go into German mode. But we got Guilty Gear. We got Giga Wing. We've got everything. That rhymed. Um, can you... <laughs> Alright. Well, you know, I, 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 I have fun. I really try to have fun. We have fun here at uh, Mad, the Mad Panic Gaming Studio, a.k.a. my apartment. So we've got all the Capcom vs. SNKs, and we've got the Gunbirds, and we've got the Giga Wings, and we've got this, and we've got that. Uh, we've just got... I mean, is there anything we don't got? Is this not the definition of epic? I think if you um, look in the dictionary epic, uh, you'll see a bunch of stuff like this. We got US Shinmu 5360, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I think not the for matching service version. Uh, just the regular version. If it was for matching service, it would be uh, much, much more expensive. Um, but more of these classic Dreamcast games. Dynamite Decca 2, Sonic Adventure 2, Dino Crisis. The Dreamcast version is excellent. Biohazard 2, in the Dreamcast version of that game, is my favorite version. And some Milky Season. Also my favorite version of Milky Season. <laughs> I don't know, what am I saying? Um, okay, so like a ton of great games. PlayStation, Dreamcast, Saturn. You gotta love it, baby. <laughs> PC Engine. This is the スーパーバレーボール地球を救えサイバーコアロンロンリアルバトルオールデンアクセス getting started the last leg of this game hunt and we are going to be looking at, what is it? Uh, PC Engine and Mega Drive. But these are actually some empty cases here. So if you want to buy some empty cases, there you go. Not all of them. Not all the Mega Drive cases were empty. But again, that's just like a signifier that they know that they are selling to collectors. Because why else would you sell like empty cases, empty boxes, manuals, and things? When John and Jane Q Public is not particularly gonna care about that stuff. But anyway, uh, what do we got here? So we got some old Sega stuff. We got the Sega My Cards. Uh, a few PC Engine Loose Hue cards. Uh, you can put all of those on like a single rack. But they're also some of the Sega My Cards. Uh, some Sega like SG-1000 and old stuff like that I don't come across too much. And some Mega CD. Um, which, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Sega CD and Mega CD. A lot of the games, you know, I'm not big on the FMV stuff. But we got Ernest Evans. Uh, that's uh, all well and good. And uh, whatever the hell uh, this is. Something by Wolf Team. So, super anime-esque. And, um, Kamen Rider. 
Uh, what is that? It says Common Rider Zo or Zero, whatever it could be. Uh, Sonic CD though. Now that is a game I do like. I am quite the Sonic CD fan. I got some Romna One Half and uh, what have you. Mortal Kombat. Okay, now you're talking my language. And some Heavy Nova. Chevy Nova, and then a PC Engine CD game where it doesn't belong. I'm telling you, these games are getting off the shelves at night, and they're going, and they're they're gallivanting, they're cohorting around with other, um, you know, game consoles. What the hell? W uh, Woody Pop? There's a game called Woody Pop on the Game Gear. All right, and it's uh, right next to OutRun. So Woody Pop, when the lights go out, Woody Pop gets off the shelf and goes to talk to OutRun. Uh, Sonic and Tails on the Game Gear, also cool. Um, this is just cool in general because, like, I don't come across very much Game Gear, uh, period. And then this, even more unusual, uh, Virtual Boy games. Boxed, complete Virtual Boy games. Um, and they're like 2,000 yen, something like 1630. They're not, like, super overpriced, and I think that's just because there's, like, I mean, let's be honest, there's really no demand for Virtual Boy games. So these are boxed, complete, great condition Virtual Boy games. That would make them fairly uncommon. They're, they're at least way less common than some of those Famicom games they were charging stupid prices for. Um, and we got some SG-1000 games too, which is also cool. And these are also in really great condition. Uh, 2680 for, what is that, Blade, Blade Eagle, whatever it's called. Um, that's cool. So yeah, I also don't come across too much of that. And uh, some of this older stuff, 32X games. Uh, something, what is this, for the MSX? So whatever the hell that is, Mauser. I don't know what Mauser is, but uh, okay. Uh, MSX, though, that's another, you know, the, the Japanese home computers. Uh, I know very little about, so stuff like MSX, SG-1000, you really can't ask me. Um, but we got these box Mega Drive games, Valus 3, pretty cool, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, um, which is also cool. You know, I saw that most recent Ghostbusters movie with the kids and everything, it was alright, but you know, total uh, re retreading nostalgia stuff. Uh, World of Illusions, probably my favorite Mickey game on the Mega Drive. I don't know, Mickey Mania is pretty good too, though. Uh, Quack Shot for like 800 yen, that's a good price on that. 900 for Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. We got some God Odin Setsu. We got some Bare Knuckle 2. Uh, all that good stuff. And some whatever the hell. And uh, this one, I always forget because I... You gotta forgive me, I suck at reading kanji. But I think this game is actually called Mystic Defender. In uh, North America. And then this, kind of a fun find. I don't come across it too often. Especially with the little lenticular thing in there. But uh, Ringside Angel. Featuring Cutie Suzuki. Uh, and on the rare occasion I do come across it, usually the little thing is not in the cover. So that's kind of cool to come across. Uh, some God Odin Setsu 2 for 16,000. I'm sorry, I gotta laugh at that. What the hell are you thinking? What is it signed by like the... Someone? What the hell's going on? Uh, Shoranomon, Ring Master. Uh, or is it Ring Master? Jewel Master, I'm sorry. Uh, I really like Jewel Master. It, 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 it's not like the most fast playing whatever, but uh, it, it's a fun little action platformer. I like it. You can mix the ring powers together. Uh, Shadow Dancer, Curse, which is kind of crappy. Uh, some Joe Namath football. That's Joe Namath, right? Uh, 6,000 for Super Street Fighter 2. It was just Vapor Lock. Joe Namath. Sonic Speedball, and I'm looking, it's very dusty on top, so they put it in plastic when it was still covered in dust. 42.50. I like Sonic Spinball, but come on. Clean it up, Suda guy. What's going on over there? Daisimpu, another good one. 43.10. Uh, man, these, I'm just, whatever. <laughs> I guess I was having a little hard, bit of trouble getting it back on the shelf there. Some uh, Darius, the newly released uh, Mega Drive Darius game, so that's pretty cool. Herzog Zwei. Toe Jam and Earl, Fighting Monsters, Bare Knuckle, oh my god, Forgotten Worlds, Hokuto no Ken, 5280, Break My Heart uh, for Last Battle there, and Magical Taruru Token, good game, and the original Mortal Kombat, didn't exactly fly off the shelves in Japan, they were Street Fighter and Fatal Fury type folks over here. 
Uh, and Yu Yu Hakusho. All right. So that's a whole bunch of boxed Mega Drive stuff. But we're moving on. They got all this uh, Wander Swan and other various things. This is kind of like a little miscellaneous section. Just all this random stuff. Uh, what the hell? Cyber City by Renovation. Some kind of like PC game. Um, there's a lot of those, like the anime, PC, point-and-click variety type games. The visual novels and all that kind of stuff. MVS carts. Uh, King of Fighters. What did that say? Like 99? Um, that's pretty cool. And World Heroes 2 Jets. So that's nice. I don't come across very many MVS games either. Uh, and 3DO. Uh, again, this is just like a weird aisle for stuff that I never really find uh, in the wild. So... And when I say the wild, I mean without having to go to like Super Potato or something. Uh, Super Street Fighter 2X. And it's stuck to the game in front of it. I told you, they didn't, you know, they're they're irresponsible with the, the price stickers in this place. I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, some Neo Geo AES games. I guess some of the more common ones. Fatal Fury 2. Uh, and is that all of it? And there's some more like PC stuff. Uh, this Genocide 2. Uh, Master of the Dark, what did that say, Communion? The hell does that mean? It's, it's, there's, it's, it looks like a mech game to me. I don't know what a Dark Communion has to do with that. Uh, sounds like more of like a, the title to like a Slayer album or something. Uh, some Neo Geo CD, you know I love that. They got a bunch of different World Heroes games. I do like me some World Heroes. And, uh, some Real Bouts. Can't go wrong with that. And uh, bowling. Because who? why go bowling in real life when you can just bowl on your Neo Geo CD? Um, and now we move along. All right, wait, not quite yet. <laughs> More Neo Geo CD. Uh, Dunk Dream, which I like a lot. And then uh, Tengai Makyo Shinden. I think it's called Kabuki Clash. Uh, here we've got some um, uh, Gekka no Kenshi. AKA The Last Blade, Flying Power Disc 7800. I love this game, love it, love it, love it. But with the brand new uh, Wind Jammers 2, uh, that's the better game, I, I would say. Uh, and Gekka no Kenshi 2, great game, beautiful game. Nightmare inducing load times on the Neo Geo CD, though. Uh, Magical Drop 2, love it, classic stuff. Now, ladies and gents and others, we get to move on to the PC Engine while I try not to sneeze <coughs> unsuccessfully. We're not doing another take though because I've been recording these things for like two hours now. Uh, but what do we got? We got Loom. Whatever the hell Loom is. I do like the cover art though, that's kind of cool. But we got some Rama one half. We've got uh, Mr. Heli, which is always awesome. Maroon. I do like Mr. Heli a lot. Uh, that's uh, kind of an underappreciated, an unsung hero of the PC Engine, if you will. Uh, but we got a whole bunch there, including like Marshall Champion, other various things. PC Engine, kind of a, a library I have conflicts with. Final Soldier is excellent. Fighting Street is dog shit. Um, yeah, I kind of have a little bit of a, a thing with the um, the uh, PC Engine there, because some of the games are like just the best, some of the best of the 16-bit generation, in particular their shooters are great, some of those uh, CD games, the East games and all that good stuff, the Falcom games, they're absolutely amazing, but there is, I mean, we glorify the PC Engine here, we love our PC Engines, but there are a lot of dog shit games on the PC Engine as well. Do not get it twisted. Uh, 1380 for, I think, Ryuko no Ken, uh, Art of Fighting on the uh, PC Engine, uh, with the arcade whatever, Salamander, excellent, and the, the PC Engine version uh, is outstanding, and here we have something perverted, <laughs> play Mahjong and take off your clothes, lady, uh, Macross 2036, pretty good game, not uh, really one of the better uh, shoot 'em ups on the PC Engine when you consider we got stuff like this, like Yukyoku Tiger aka Twin Cobra. Amazing version of the game, but now you can play it if you pick up the uh, the shooting garage, one of those shooting garages with uh, twin cobra and stuff in it. You're gonna, you're just gonna love that. Alien Crush 27, whatnot. That's pretty good. Emerald Dragoon, whatever, whatever. Farah and Lydia, whatever it's called. Special Criminal Investigations. Eldis. 
Not to be confused with F dis. Uh, some wizardry. Uh, what else we got? We got all this good stuff. We got some R type one and R type two. Uh, just in case you didn't uh, you didn't get enough of that R type that first time around. And we got some advanced variable geo. A game uh, not really lauded for its great controls or anything. Just you know, the girls take their clothes off. I think that's really what. A lot of people are drawn to that series for. There's also R type stuff. And there's whatever the hell I just I picked up. That's not even a PC Engine game. What the hell uh, is going on here? But we've got some more cool things here. Was that Outlive? Atomic Robo Kid. Decent game as well. And we got some of the Valus games Valus 3, 2220. Valus 3 is pretty good. Uh, what else we got? We got Valus 2, 5560, and Valus 2 sucks ass. East 1 and 2. Great game. East 4. 1150 for East 4. That's a deal if I've ever seen one because that is a really good game. And we got some more stuff down here, but uh, to be honest, we've been doing this for a while. I think it's time uh, I put the camera away, I buy my games, and then we head outside for some final comments. Okay. Well. Uh, that was pretty epic. Uh, yeah, the Sudagaya and Tatsukawa fully loaded with games. Actually, right now, probably better than the one I went to in Shinjuku, like my normal one. Wow, it's got windy since I was in there. Um, anyway, uh, grabbed a bunch of games today. Had to really exercise some self-control uh, because this is the kind of place you could go broke at. Uh, but I kind of like halfway filled up my backpack with games. So uh, what did I pick up today? Uh, tune in for a future uh, pickups video. Dun, dun, dun. What did he get today? Uh, but I picked up some Super Famicom, some PC Engine, Mega Drive, Saturn, Dreamcast, PS1 and PS2. Lots of stuff today. Uh, so again, yeah, really cool. Uh, this building, uh, shopping center called Park Avenue in Tachikawa. Uh, great suit of guy. They had some other cool shops in there too, and even a nice little cafe. Sit down, get yourself a coffee in between uh, game hunts. Um, but yeah, had a great time. Uh, just kind of floored. Some of the prices were great. Some of the prices were horrible. <laughs> it was a real kind of like mixed bag. You really got to dig and hunt, but I found some good stuff for prices that were definitely tolerable. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, so from beautiful, scenic Tachikawa on a sunny spring day, uh, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.